Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're looking at Chapter 2 of Grievers by Adrienne Marie Brown. Um, if you missed it, there's a video up on the first chapter as well that I'd recommend checking out before this one. Uh, same content heads up as the previous chapter. And as always, let's go ahead and hop in with a passage from what we're reading. When she found the first bone in the ashes, she gasped. This is what she'd been looking for. It was slightly rounded in her palm, just longer than her hand, maybe a rib. The bone was warm to the touch, dark, grainy, gray. She slid her thumb along it, rubbing her mother's ashes into her mother's bone, breathless at the intimacy of this holding, this touch. She placed the bone to her lips and then between her teeth, pulling her shirt over her head. She wrapped the bone in soft black cotton. So in chapter two of Grievers, uh, Dune rises the next morning to sift through the cremated remains. She's been studying cremation for four days before Kama finally passed. Um, and well, hard to do outside of a furnace, Dune created a DIY furnace from cement blocks and leftover wood from an unfinished project. I believe it was a unfinished um, deck that they were building. Uh, Dune is able to find multiple bones from her mother, suggesting that the cremation was not able to read the, sh the temperatures of like a professional setting or anything. Um, but Dune later explains that she cremated her mother because one, it was a more sacred way to let go of her mother than handling handling her off to the state. Uh, two, the cost of professional disposal could be up to three months wages for her. And that three, the cremation was the best way to dispose of sickly bodies or mysterious deaths. Dune collects the ashes into two vases and wraps the remaining bones. An officer and infectious disease specialist appear at their doorstep asking for comma. The officer remarks that the cremation may have been illegal. Um, he says he'd have to check. He wasn't sure if it was okay. Um, and the specialist remarks that the cremation was a smart choice before leaving. Mama Vivian emerges to see what the visitors had to say, um, but Mama Vivian has not spoken since Kama passed away, and Dune articulates the fear, pain, and burden of the situation. So, the chapter ends with a series of questions, um, from the perspective of Dune, largely. One of these is, uh, who do you call to bury your dead when you have no money? A page or two earlier, Dune asked the visitors, are hospitals still turning people away? This chapter begins to pose the question of what do you do when the system has failed you? What do you do when the social safety nets do not choose or are not able to protect you? Dune's answer is currently to do what you can. However, this chapter strongly establishes that doing what you can is not an easy or uncomplicated matter. It's also important to note that this chapter has a sharp contrast between the sacredness of sifting through her mother's ashes and the impartiality of the officials. While digging through the ashes, there's a clear physical intimacy in the way she cradles the remains of her mother's body. Um, and when the visitors appear, they start and end with merely a list of questions, legality, and safety. The pyre kind of sits at the intersection of these two. It's both practical, but it also has more spiritual resonance. And so one of the big questions of this chapter is about the nature of burial or disposal of the dead. Was the backyard cremation the right thing to do in this situation? And if so, or if not, uh, right for whom? As always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. Um, thanks for checking this out. Uh, as mentioned in the first one, I'm going to try to get through the whole book, but we'll see if there's interest in it. Um, if I don't get through the whole book, not the end of the world, at least we'll have like the first couple chapters covered. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.